Thank you for being here and welcome to Reykjavik, Iceland. Uh, wait, actually, we didn't make it to Reykjavik, Iceland, unfortunately. We are in Tahunga Canyon, which is a beautiful natural space just north of Los Angeles, California. And uh, I'm here at my good friend Scott's house, who is in this beautiful mid-century modern home, which you'll see, you can see behind me. Uh, so Scott, th thank you, Scott. He's my tech guy too, running this whole thing. So it, you know, it would, uh, when Maxim came to me and said, um, I'd like, would you like to, I'd like you to speak at this uh, conference. My first thought was, well, heck yeah, Reykjavik, Iceland. Uh, I should probably let that go, huh? <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, no, he said to me, he said, uh, you know, cause I'm a landscape designer for those of you who don't know that <clears throat> I have been doing that for about a, a dozen years now. And, uh, Thank you. That was probably a bit of a distraction. We are going to have slides. That's why this is here. So, but I'll do my best to tell stories without visuals. So, uh, when Maxim came to me, he said, "Are you going to, you know, talk about landscape design and uh, and how to, you know, maybe grow plants in Iceland?" Uh, I guess I didn't let that go yet, did I? <laughs> anyway, um, so I said to him, "I said, no, I, I want to do something inspiring. I wanted to, you know, because talking about the technical aspects of landscape design is." Uh, can be kind of boring, but I thought, well, let me let me combine the two. I'm going to make an inspirational talk about what I learned as a landscape designer over the years uh, uh, from from working with nature. And in fact, uh, the name of this talk, Think Outside, is the name of my upcoming book, uh, which I'll tell you a little bit more about later. And that book is essentially about all of my lessons that I've learned over the past, gosh, 10, 12, 15 years that I've been doing this now. Um, but I wasn't always a landscape designer. And in fact, I, I used to be a, a creative director in marketing and advertising. Remember uh, the TV show, Mad Men? And you guys seen that? That was really popular, probably one of the best TV shows ever. Uh, if you didn't, you need to go see it. The lead character, Don Draper, I was that guy. Except the only difference was it was you know in the 90s and the aughts and I wasn't uh, drinking all day while I was at work and sleeping with my secretaries. But you know, I was basically that that character. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, I loved nature, and I I was finding my work uh, to be unfulfilling from a from a deeper sense, like a deeper calling. It was um, it, it was creative, it was interesting, but I, there was something more. I knew I had more to give. Um, so I had uh, I had this epiphany. It was about. What would you say about 12 years ago when the oil spill happened in the Gulf, a big oil spill? I knew I had to do something that was more, uh, that had more substance to it. In fact, I wanted, I knew I wanted to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. You know, I remember um, being at work one day in the office and uh, I, I would, we worked for one of the largest corporations in the world. I won't say the name, but you'll, you'll get it in a minute here. And I collected, um, all the, the empty plastic bottles from everywhere around the office. And I would, they would fill up underneath my desk. And my, even my boss would come over and go, can we, can we just throw these out, please? And I'm like, no, no, I gotta, gotta make a difference. <laughs> but anyway, it, I had this epiphany in the middle of creating one more <laughs> campaign for this corporate, you know, for, to sell more high fructose corn syrup, if you get the connection there. Um, and I just realized I, ca I can't do this anymore. I had I have what I call my Jerry Maguire moment, you know, where if you ever didn't see that movie, that's another great movie you need to go see, but uh, where he just, he writes this uh, manifesto and he's, he's got to change his whole life and everything. I had that moment where I was like, I just can't do this anymore. I have to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. But the question is, is, well, what, what do I do? And, you know, I've always loved nature. I've always been passionate about the environment. Like I said, this happened around the time of the, um, the Gulf oil spill. And I knew it's like, what, you know, what can I do? I need to reconnect with nature. I, at this point, I've been a designer for 20 years and, and I, I wanted to be able to marry that with something else. And I, you know, as, um, as a child, I, uh, my mother would walk me, would take me into her garden and we would uh, plant uh, a lot of things. She, everything from just regular plants to food, even food, trees, you know, in fact, I, you know, she taught me at a very young age how to, how to deal with plants and the environment. And I, even, I knew how to say philodendron. I knew what a philodendron was before I ever took any biology class. Um, but 
I didn't realize then what a, what an impression that would have made on me and and how much that would affect who I became later in life. And I realized, you know, she planted a seed, par, uh, pardon the pun, pun intended, um, that of what it would what it would become later in life for me. And uh, so I'd like to take a minute and have everybody just kind of where you're at. I, I don't know how many of you are here, but wherever you're sitting, take a minute, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and imagine back a time uh, when, you, when you were inspired by something, when, you, when something affected you in life and you didn't know how it was gonna affect later in life, but just, just kind of see if you can bring that into your mind and then hold on to that thought and we'll get back to that in a minute. But, um, uh, you know, so I was very much inspired by what my mother did for me. I won't tell you how many years ago, but it was a long time ago. And I realized that was that was my calling, and I knew I had to act on it. So, uh, but I didn't know anything about landscape design. I had to I had to seek out a teacher, and who was going to be the best teacher for me to to learn this to do this than than Mother Nature herself? And uh, so that's what this talk is about here. This talk, and then my book, as I mentioned, is uh, coming out soon, uh, is about what I learned by working with Mother Nature over these past, you know. Uh, several years. So the, the first lesson that I learned is, is awareness. Now, awareness is, is the critical factor to any good designer or anybody who's creating anything. Um, and I know that I have a lot of creatives online here watching this with me. You can relate to this. You have to become aware of everything, your surrounding, your environment, the elements of what you're dealing with. Um, that, I mean, it goes on and on and on and on, um, but it is critical to being a good designer. And uh, when, I, when I started in landscape design, uh, the, one of the first things I had to learn was um, understanding uh, plants. Now, there's a lot more to landscape design than just plants, but that's one of the biggest, most important aspects of it. And I had to learn this literally a whole new language, which <laughs> was mostly Latin, uh, having to learn literally thousands and thousands of plant names uh, by their common name and then their botanical name. But I, asked, I had to identify them, and that was not easy. So uh, I, obviously it was through observation, and I had to really pay attention. And Scott, do you happen to have that first slide ready to go? Oh, well, look at that. Oh, actually, you know what? More importantly, I have a visual display. Look at this. We all know what a maple leaf looks like, right? Everybody's seen one of these? Except the problem is, this is not a maple leaf. This is a sycamore leaf from the uh, California sycamore, Platinus racemosa. See, there's that Latin that I learned. Um, and you can see here, oh, that didn't turn out well, did it? <laughs> well, we're just gonna roll with it. So that stuff's not supposed to be on there. Uh, so here's, you can see right here, the difference between a sycamore leaf, the one I'm holding, and a maple leaf. They, they almost look identical. To the untrained eye, they don't, you, you wouldn't know the difference, but I had to learn the difference. And um, so speaking of sycamores, uh, another uh, char characterizing factor of identifying trees is the bark. And you have that next uh, one lined up. <clears throat> nope, not that one. The next one, or the one before that, the one that says bark. Nope, that's not it either. <laughs> well, I guess, yeah, there we go. All right. So again, the visuals are not what I wanted them to be, but We'll, make, we'll get it better next time. If you look down here, you can see that uh, this is the sycamore tree. It has its mottled texture to its, uh, its bark. And then next to it is a Chinese elm tree, Almus chinensis. And they look almost identical. Now, they're not totally identical, but they look almost identical. Again, to the untrained eye, you wouldn't know the difference. And you... Um, and then um, to the untrained eye, you, you, you wouldn't know the difference, but, you, but as a, the average person doesn't need, to know, uh, doesn't need to know the difference between that tree. But I had to learn that. That was the first thing I had to learn um, uh, was awareness through observation. And it, as a designer, it taught me discernment between this and that, and it made me make better decisions and better judgment. So that, that's, that was life lesson number one, awareness. Number two, 
is in, environment is crucial. Um, the environment for a tree or a plant to grow is quite literally everything in the survival and the thriving of that plant. And, you know, it's, it's not unlike that for us humans as well. As a creative being, as a creative person, or just any human, we need to be in the right environment, a right in, an environment that's going to be conducive to, uh, to foster that growth, to foster creativity. And there's this saying that I love, as above, so below. So if you go to a, like, like a rose bush or something, and it's not blooming, and it, it isn't doing what you want. I mean, you can say that about anything, a fruit tree, rose bush, any kind of thing. And it's not doing what you want to do. You don't go to the top of the tree and poke at it and pull at it and go, why are you not, you know, blooming? What, what's, what's wrong with you? No, you, you have to go below. You have to go in and find out what's underneath. You have to get into the soil. And the soil is, is, the, is, is where the problem is going to be and where, the, uh, where you can make the changes for it to, to grow and thrive. And, um, and, it's, and it's just like that with humans, too, if you think about it. If we're not going inside and going deep and getting to know what, how we function, what, what inspires us, what stops us, what procrastinates us, um, that's, that's where the answer is. So as above, so below. Environment is, is crucial. That's lesson number two. Lesson number three is, uh, is challenges. So starting a new career obviously was loaded with challenges. I, I literally didn't know what the hell I was doing. I had no idea. And, um, and I, I struggled a lot. Uh, but it's, it's, the, it's the challenges and the struggles in life that are going to make us stronger and, and have us grow the way we need to grow. And, um, you know, I, there's a story that I, I want to share with you. Um, there's a... Uh, a biosphere that was built in uh, Arizona about 30 years ago. And the idea was, was they were gonna grow, uh, create this contained environment, totally artificial, where they were going to do all kinds of earth system experiments with animals, food, plants, trees, everything. They wanted to see if they could grow an environment uh, completely indoors, artificial, completely enclosed. You know, it's uh, think of it as like an overbearing parent on a child, <laughs> create an environment that isn't real, right? Um, so one of the experiments amongst many, many, many experiences they had, one of the experience, experiments that they had was growing trees. Now, one of the things they found that was really interesting was that the trees grew very rapidly, uh, apparently without the elements from the outdoor outside world, uh, trees grew a lot faster, but what they found out is as the trees matured and got to a certain height, like a mature height, they were falling over. They were literally toppling. And, uh, that was obviously a problem, but they were like, why is this happening? And they figured out, they learned that wind is actually what makes a tree stronger. As a, as a young tree, as a sapling, it was the, the, the blowing back and forth of trees uh, that actually develops uh, a secondary cellular structure and it makes the roots go deeper and firmer and without it, without that, the, you know, the swaying back and forth of trees, or of the wind, excuse me, the trees would not, would not grow properly. They would not uh, develop into a mature tree that could handle its, its height and its weight and everything else. So they, they were literally topping over. So, you know, the same thing, again, for us humans is if we're, if we're not challenged, if we don't go through life, we're, we're, we're basically just going to stay the same and we're going to be weak and ineffective. Now, this is not a judgment thing. I'm just making an observation of what I learned about myself in, um, in, in these lessons from nature. And another one that I, I really love this story here um, is about character, building character. Uh, a, a good, very good friend of mine has a winery about three hours north of here in Paso Robles, California. And he, uh, I actually sat down with him about a year ago and interviewed him for this book. And um, he had told me a story in the past, and I, I had him relive it for me, about how the certain type of soil in that region is actually what makes the character of the grape so unique and how it makes good wine. And he went on to tell me, it's like, I mean, if you compare like a, like a regular table grape and uh, how you just give it a lot of water, it, it's already programmed, it knows it needs to be a grape. It, it just needs to be watered and it grows into a grape. It's sweet, it's tasty, but it's, it's table fruit. 
Same with a banana, an apple, or whatever. It's fine. It's great, but but it lacks character. He said that they restrict the irrigation, and they particularly it's planted in soil that is very, very, very rough. A lot of nutrients, but the roots have to go very deep. They have to go into the soil. They have to the struggle to get what they need to grow, and it's in that struggle is where the grape develops character and how it 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 becomes the kind of grape that will eventually become a $150 bottle of wine, as opposed to just a table grape that you're going to pluck off, you know, the vine and, and eat it. So I, I love that analogy. And, you know, again, humans are the same way. It's our struggles, it's our challenges, it's the things that we go through in life. And that's what gives us character. And it makes us a more interesting person too. Otherwise we just be table grapes, right? <laughs> so that's step number three, or tell, uh, lesson number three. Uh, lesson number four is courage. So as you can imagine, going through life uh, or going through a new career uh, or anything in life, and you face these challenges, uh, we, we have to step up. We have to, uh, we have to step up to the challenges, and that takes courage. You know, because what I've learned is nature is chaotic, uh, really chaotic. <laughs> I, you know, I, I would sit down once I finally figured out how to do it and I would do a design plan. I remember the first time I, my very first project, it was funny. Um, I did this design plan, showed up on site and I was like, all right, everybody. And it, everything was different. There were so many changes, so many things that were going on that I was not prepared for. And I had to make a lot of changes to what we were doing. I was a little bit ruffled by this because I had to act on the fly. I had to, I had to respond. And everybody was looking to me, well, what, what are we doing? What's going on? And what I learned from that is to trust myself and that I know what the vision was. And I stepped up and I, I did what had to be done to, to, to make the, the, the changes and to have everything work. And, uh, and everybody who was on site there, like, trusted me. And I mean, talk about growth. I mean, that was, you know, the courage that... Uh, what I learned from that was just, you know, just do it, have the vision in mind and go for it. You know, going back to like nature being chaotic, it's chaotic, but it's never confused. Uh, you know, unlike us humans, nature has instincts. They have pre-programmed uh, aspects of what they're going to be in life. Uh, like take a, uh, take a squirrel, for example. A squirrel will run down a tree and start looking for nuts and whatnot. And let's say a coyote comes by, uh, a predator of some kind. Well, that, you know, it reacts. It, it knows that it needs to run back up in the tree and away from the, the coyote. Coyote gets disappointed and he moves on and finds a roadrunner somewhere to, to chase after. But the, um, the squirrel will come back down and start looking for, for nuts again. It doesn't, it doesn't sit up in the tree and go, I don't, I don't think I can do this squirrel thing. Um, I don't know how to find nuts. Uh, there's a lot of danger down there. I'm not leaving the tree. I'm not going back down. I'm going to stay up here and, well, I guess I'm going to starve to death. You know, it, it sounds crazy. It sounds ridiculous, but that's how we act as humans. Uh, we, we let things that happen to us affect how we go out in the world and give our gifts and express ourselves. So courage is really the, the, the beginning of, of self-expression. And self-expression is the answer to that. And, you know, funny thing about squirrels, this is a great story, and it's true. Do you know that more trees, millions of trees around wherever, the planet, are actually uh, planted and seeded and grow to become trees because squirrels forgot where they put their nuts. <laughs> squirrels, literally, they bury all their nuts, right? Uh, the acorns. And the, it, more trees have been sprouted on this planet because squirrels forgot where they put their nuts. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and I think that's a really funny statistic, but it's true. So in other words, nature always works out. You, you, you have to go with the flow. You have to trust the process. And, and you know, another example I, I love is um, a flower. Look at a flower. And there's a beautiful quote that says, the flower doesn't dream of the bee it just blossoms and the bee comes so the the, the 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 flower doesn't sit there and wonder is this a good day to do this uh am, do i look right is am i do i have all my pollen in the right place no it just 
blooms. And then the bee comes and pollinates it and you, you know the rest of the biology there. But the idea is, is trust the natural order of life. We're here to give, we are here to express ourselves and we have gifts and we just have to just give it. And that leads us perfectly into, <clears throat> excuse me, lesson number five, giving. Giving, 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 giving. Nature gives. Nature is all about giving. I love planting fruit trees because I, you know, I plant them a lot. People love having their own fruit and everything. And I, I, I plant a lot of fruit trees. And um, what's great about that is, you know, I, I nine times out of 10, 99 out of 100, I'll plant a fruit tree and I will never see that tree again. I will never uh, get a chance to taste the fruit of that. Now, uh, that's me doing my part in uh, planting a tree and propagating nature. The, the client or wherever it gets planted, maybe it's in a schoolyard, the kids, they benefit from that. And, um, and that's, that's me doing my part. And in fact, uh, Scott, you have an amazing lemon tree down here. Every time I come here, well, I shoot a lot of my course videos here with Scott because like I said, it's a beautiful property and they have this amazing lemon tree and it's actually not even that big. It's pretty average lemon tree size. And it is always, always producing and giving lemons. Look at this baby. This, this is a, like a normal average size lemon. The, the tree is constantly giving. Every time I come here, right? What do I say to you, Scott? I got to get more lemons, right? Uh, and I bring a bag and I fill it up with lemons and I never, never don't have lemons. But that's the point is it just gives and it gives and it gives. It doesn't ask why. It doesn't ask if it's doing it right. And in fact, lemons fall off the tree and it doesn't go, oh shit, what am I going to do about this? It just gives and it gives and it gives. And <clears throat> how that shows up in creativity is um, I have this, uh, speaking of uh, mid-century modern, like I said, this beautiful home here is mid-century modern home. I did a project not too long ago on a mid-century modern uh house and they have a very distinctive design style and i love the challenge that comes with that because to me in creating a landscape that goes with a um uh a mid century modern home it it has to it has to sing with the architecture you know i see so many times when the landscape just doesn't go with the architecture but you i let the architecture speak to me and tell me what it wants what it needs and i let that guide me Okay, now how that, what does that have to do with giving? So <clears throat> I had this design recently and it had a really, really bizarre shaped pool in the background, uh, backyard, uh, which was put in there by another designer. I don't know if it was the original architect or if it came later. I think it actually was part of the original architect, but it had this, uh, I, it had this angle. I'm, I'm, I hope you can see my hands here that then a pool, it was kind of rectangular shape and then it had this weird angle that shot off like this. And it kind of disrupted everything that the backyard was supposed to be. So the client asked me, you know, what can we do? I want to spend more time here in this backyard and I want to get rid of all this concrete. So I sat there and I looked at it and I looked at it and I go, God, this, this, this big angle is actually really disruptive. Um, and then I thought, no, this is a gift. I'm going to let this angle of this pool define every aspect of the design of this project. And I don't have an example over here to show you, but basically I took that angle and I then made all the concrete uh, slabs go in the same direction. Uh, we created a wooden deck off to the side that shot off of the back doors in that same angle and then curved around just like it did on the pool. And I let that angle, which I wouldn't ever, I wouldn't say that it was a, uh, a, a deficit or a problem. It was a challenge. And it called me to be a better designer. But here, here's the part about giving. The guy who designed that years ago didn't know the gift he was giving me. He didn't know that what he designed created something new in the future. He had no idea how that was going to come alive later in life. And, um, you know, anytime we create something in life, we, we don't know what the impact is going to be. We don't know what, uh, what that's going to look like 10 years from now, 20 years from now. And that's why, you know, going back to the, the trees, why I love planting trees is, oh, and Scott, you, you told me you did not plant that tree, right? Somebody else, it was here when you got it. So the person who planted that tree had no idea how much better they were making my life, how much I would come and live off of these lemons. I, I love lemon water. Um, and I, I probably eat more of these lemons than you do, huh, Scott? <laughs> so, you know what I mean? It's just, it's a beautiful cycle of life. The point is, is that we, um, we, we are like the lemon tree or we can be like the lemon tree if we choose to. Um, 
it again, it doesn't get confused. It doesn't sit there and go, you know, I'm, I'm not sure about this lemon tree thing. I think I would rather be, you know, lettuce or something. It, it, never, it never gets confused on what it's supposed to do. It just does. Now, we humans, we have a, uh, a much different programming to us. And that's a whole other time for another talk. In fact, I, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not diving into that. What I'm just showing you is uh, the, the way that my life, my creativity, uh, the things that I bring into the world are inspired by working with nature because I notice these things going back to lesson number one, awareness. Um, pay attention, notice everything. So like the lemon tree that gives, 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 it doesn't eat its own fruit. And the birds that sit in the tree, they don't, when they sing, they're not listening to their own song. I mean, I'm sure they can hear it, but not, they're not singing it for them. They're singing it for the other birds or fortunately we can actually hear it. Or uh, it tells Nico the cat that there's birds in the tree and he'll probably want to go chase after it. Nico is sitting over here on the couch. You can't see him, but trust me, he's there. I'm surprised he's not up here, actually. Um, and, and when you look at all aspects of nature, so the, the, tree, the tree doesn't eat its own fruit. The bird doesn't sing for itself. Rivers, they don't quench their own thirst. Flowers. They don't bloom to impress the flower next to them. They don't sit there and think, what, you know, am I wearing the right colors today? Is, is that bee gonna come and see me or is the flower next to me gonna get the bee? No, it just blooms. And that's, that's probably the biggest lesson that I have learned from working with nature is as a creative person, and I reach out to all of you here, I know a lot of you are watching the conference, are creatives, and my, I have always been of the place that um, all creative people, I mean, all people are creatives, that there isn't anybody that isn't creative. And, um, and it's our, we're here to give. We're here to give. So how I'd like to conclude or bring this to more of a close here is, um, you know, there's, there's a ripple effect to life, uh, just like throwing a stone in a pond and watching it skip and the, and the ripples that go out and go out. And the ripples, depending on the size of the pond, will, will go all the way to the other side of the, of the, of the pond or the lake or whatever. And, you know, we, we don't know what the effects are going to be of, of, of the, thing, the, the impacts, the actions, the creative things that we put out in the world. But you know what? It's not our job to know what the impact is. In fact, um, Andy Warhol had a quote that, uh, where he said something about, just do art, just do it and put it out there and let, let the people who aren't doing anything, let them judge it, let them decide what it is and what it isn't. And it has nothing to do with you. Just do it, put it out there, give it, give it, give it like the lemon tree, right? So, um, Let's go back to the, uh, to the exercise that we started earlier where you were, where I had you close your eyes and take a deep breath. Let's do that again. Take a deep breath. And now imagine, as you imagine that there was a time something happened in your past, um, a, a person that came into your life and gave you something that inspired you to, to become who you are today or some aspect of your life. And um, now I want you to close your eyes and imagine something that you've created, you know, something that you've done in your life. And, or maybe it's something you're working on now, something you're creating now, or that you want to. And maybe, maybe that's the, the most important aspect of this is what do you want to create? Have you thought about this? Are there things that are inside of you that want to come out, that give birth, like the seed that wants to come out? Imagine that. What is that? And, and imagine what the, what the impact could be. And in fact, actually, I don't want you to think about what the impact is because you don't know what the impact is. All you can do is give, create, don't let anything stop you. Um, I believe that we all came here with a creative contract with the universe. So plants have uh, instincts or they have programs in their seeds. How, how is it possible that a, a tiny acorn becomes a massive oak tree? It, it, it doesn't actually make logical sense, but it's programmed in the acorn. Um, a lemon tree, lemon tree makes lemons. 
you know, so what makes us different as humans is that we, uh, I believe that we have a contract, a program, but we also have free choice, free will. We can choose whatever it is that we want to create. But I still believe that there's something inside of you that wants to come out. And I believe that's the contract with the universe. I believe that we all have a creative contract with the universe. And it's really up to us to, to discover that and, and then to find a way to give it away. Um, and in fact, there's a, there's a great quote that I love that says that the, um, uh, the, the, first, the first day your life begins is when you discover what your gift is. And then the most joyful day is giving it away or learning how to give it away. I think I probably screwed that up a little bit, but you, you get it. You might, have, you might have heard it. The point's the same, is that you, it's really up to us to discover what that is. And if you're listening, like I listened to nature, it told me, it came to me. I sat there in my office. I was in Atlanta, Georgia, and I was sitting there in my office. I was, I'm not exaggerating. I was surrounded by plastic bottles. My boss was about to fire me. And I was like, I've got to do something here. I've got to do something. And selling more of this carbonated shit is not the solution. I knew it wasn't what was inside of me trying to come out. I knew there was something more. So I looked in, inside. I, as above, so below. I went inside and I looked. And I went back to um, the times that I walked through the gardens with my, with my mother. Um, She's, uh, she's gone now. She's been gone for 16 years. And <clears throat> excuse me, I shared this memorial. Uh, I shared this story at her memorial about how she inspired me to, uh, <clears throat> sorry, make me laugh, Scott. I, <laughs> okay. Um, all right, deep breath. Walking through the gardens and working with my hands in the dirt with my mother, <clears throat> Back then, I had no idea that that was my contract with the universe. And um, it took me a long time to go through a lot of shit in life before I had the courage to step up and say, I have got to do something else. I've got to make a difference. And I listened to that. And um, when I stepped away from my career, which was actually a really successful career as a creative director. When I stepped away from that, <clears throat> I signed that contract with the universe. I said, yes, I'm going to do this. I accept this. And I signed it. <clears throat> and, you know, that's, that's really the point of, of, of this whole talk and why I wrote the book, Think Outside. <clears throat> the title of the book and this talk comes from uh, it, it initially started out as a, a tagline for my company. I thought it was really clever. Think outside uh, because it plays off of the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the old maxim of think outside the box, right? But there is no box. And the other one is think outside as in outdoors. I'm a landscape and exterior designer, right? So it's all about thinking outside, being outside, living outside. And then, but the most important one that I think really came later as, as this, this concept developed, which is think outside yourself. Think outside the myopic bubble that we all live in. We all, we all have this. This is part of, this is our ego. This is part of what it means to be an individual from every, everything else and everyone else. The difference that makes me, me, that makes you, you, that makes Scott, Scott, and even Nico the cat is a unique cat. The, the point is, is that I, I'm encouraging people, the idea about connecting with nature is really about connecting with your source, connecting, we can call it God, connect with God, connect to, your, connect to your higher power, connect to what it is that you know is there trying to live through you. We're all here to give a gift, just like the lemon tree. And we let shit get in the way that keeps us from, from just going for it and doing it. And um, you know, so go, go back to that, that moment where you're, uh, 
I, I, I don't, some of you people might still have your eyes closed. <laughs> I forgot to ask you to open them, but keep them closed again. So close your eyes again and, and think about what the, the story I just shared about my mom and think about something you're creating or want to create. And I guess I can open my eyes, otherwise I'm not gonna know where I'm standing. So the, uh, what is it? Take, take some time, don't, you don't even have to do this right now. Take some time and tap into what is trying to come through me? And even if you've been a creative person your whole life, maybe it's like, what's the next thing that you wants to come through me? And, and, and do it. Just do it. Just give. Give, 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 give. And um, so, like I said, the, it was the day that I stepped away from that career as a, um, as a, land, uh, a creative director for uh, uh, advertising and marketing, I made the decision that I was going to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. And over the last, uh, you know, 15 years, 12 years, I have created well over a hundred projects, uh, landscape design projects and, uh, with, with varying degrees of success. I won't, I won't uh, lie. I mean, I, the learning curve was intense from the beginning to where I am now and where I am now. See, it's funny because this is probably my third iteration of, of my career. I'm not a spring chicken anymore. And I am, I'm, I'm already now looking at what's next. I was inspired because again, I was listening. I went below and I was listening. I'm always listening. What, what, what else is trying to live through me now? And you know, the, the funny thing is, is I used to be really shy. Uh, in fact, I'm, you know, I'm not really nervous up here right now, but it's still like a really big deal for me to stand up. And, and here I am in front of an international audience. And uh, next year, it will be live in Iceland. And that's going to be really amazing. But even to stand here in, in Scott's living room, <clears throat> it, I, I think back to when I was really shy because I hadn't found my voice yet. I hadn't dug deeper and discovered through the processes that I just talked to you about here, awareness an environment that cultivates creativity, uh, going through the challenges and the struggles and accepting them and embracing them as part of the journey. Don't let them stop you because you're gonna have the courage to be self-expressed, to be, be that flower that just says, fuck it, I am here, I'm a flower and I'm gonna be the best flower here and I don't really don't care what these other flowers are doing. That bee is coming and I know it. So <laughs> you have to find that aspect of you that just says, I am going to do it. Be the squirrel that comes down from the tree and goes, all right, coyote's gone, I'm gonna find my, my, my nuts. <laughs> and, or you might be the squirrel that, that actually didn't find the nuts and it becomes a tree, which is actually a really good thing. You see that, how a squirrel forgetting where he planted a nut, buried a nut, it, at some point in time became a huge massive oak tree. This is why I'm saying nature is perfect. The world that we live in, we are part of nature. We are not separate from nature. The world that we live in is, is a, it's not a closed biosphere like the failed experiment in Arizona. Uh, it, it, is, it is real. This is, in fact, nature is the only thing that is real. And it's important that we, we tap into and listen and find out what our inner nature is and trust it. Trust that it's there for a reason. Trust that you, you have something more to give. And you have to let go of what, you know, what might be the outcome and what anybody else is going to say and don't care. So again, I'll go back to the contract with the universe. And I didn't realize that until much later in life, that that was my contract, the, the experience I had with my mother and what she taught me and, you know, sharing it much later in life after she passed away, uh, was that's when I discovered I wanted to do landscape architecture and be part of the solution. Oh, and, and what I was going to say that I uh, was leading to there was I'm now in a position to give away this new knowledge, which is really what I'm doing here. I'm sharing this with you, what I've learned. It's what's going to be in my book. And I'm also creating courses to teach people landscape design, a little, little more on the technical side. This is hopefully much more inspirational. But when you think about your contract with the universe, what that might be, going back to the meditation we were doing. Again, maybe do it, maybe do it later tonight, maybe do it this weekend and, and really tap in what's, what's next. What is it that I'm 
I'm here to give. What, what, what difference can I make? And I ask you this, when you, after you think about it, you know, what, what are you planting in your garden right now? What fruit trees can you plant in your own garden, in a garden nearby you, in one for someone else? What, obviously I'm using a metaphor here, what, 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 unless you're a landscape designer or want to learn how to do landscape design, what, what are you planting? What's going to blossom next season? What, what fruits are going to be bared a year from now? And ask yourself, what, and as I ask you, what, what is your creative contract? We all have a creative contract with the universe. What is your creative contract? And then I ask you, have you signed it? Thank you. So we I can believe now we have a lot of open time the floor for questions, questions if anyone has any questions. <clears throat> Do we have any questions? Um, Scott is on the thing over here, so he's going to tell me what the questions might be. Type, type them in. So, oh, oh, please, if you have any questions or anything you want to say, please type them in in the chat, and that way I can uh, Scott can read them off to me, and I can I can address them or answer them or whatever. And Nico, by the way, is still sitting on the couch over there. I am so surprised he didn't come over here and ambush me. Come here, Nico. You want to be in the video? <laughs> You know, animals obviously are a big part of, of nature and uh, uh, not just plants. I mean, my business, what I do is necessary with plants. But actually, you know, come to think of it, I'll go off on a tangent here since we have some time. Um, <laughs> when I plant plants, I just finished designing a project in Malibu. My biggest, most challenging, speaking of challenges, projects I've ever, ever, ever done. Three and a half acres in Malibu. For those of you who don't know where Malibu is, it's a beautiful beach community way out it's where all the celebrities and very very wealthy people there's a big house big estate on a bluff overlooking the pacific ocean and uh what i found out was uh i was first of all i was extremely excited about getting this project couldn't wait to dive in and i found out that malibu if and again if you're not familiar they just had a bunch of fires uh a couple of years ago a few years ago that just wiped out and devastated a lot of the area so the, uh, there's a lot of restrictions in the city of Malibu, and there's a lot of entities that I have to deal with. There's the Coastal Commission, the Biology Department, and the Fire Department, and they all have their say of what I can and cannot do. So talk about challenges, right? Normally, if I'm working on a, on a house in a suburb here somewhere, or even in the middle of the city, I just plan whatever I want, or whatever the client wants, or a combination of the two. But boy, in Malibu, whew, they... They were basically telling me what I couldn't couldn't do, and that I resisted that. I, I hated that at first. It was a it, it sucked, but but I learned a lot. I mean, there was so much um, uh, to learn from it. I all the plants 50, from fifty feet from the the house, I could I could pretty much plant most of what I wanted. And of course, the uh, from the biology department, the uh, fire department had different things to say about that as well. But anything beyond that had to be native plants, and um, not just native to like the state of California, which is a very, very large state. It was had to be native to the Santa Monica Mountains, <laughs> which gave me a very small plant palette to work from. So I would, it's like, it's like telling an artist, you can only do this in browns. You know, it wasn't, I, I didn't have the freedom to like, let's see, where can we add color and where can we make a big splash of whatever else? It's like, no, it's like, I've got these plants to work with, but I worked with it. And I found that I created probably one of the most beautiful, uh, landscapes that I've ever done because I, I stepped up to the challenge and I, and I worked within the parameters. And like I said, the fire department had their say so about what had to happen because, okay. And uh, anyway, so I thought I'd share that. Oh, oh, actually one last point I want to make about that. The beautiful thing, because I was talking about Nico the cat, is why it's important to do native plants is the, um, it's for the wildlife. Obviously, they don't want invasive plants in there that will take over. And believe me, there's plenty of them out there, and that's what they're trying to control. But the uh, the main thing is so the native uh, fauna, the, the animals, have a place to go. The birds that are migrating, that you know, they when they fly over, they they have a place to stop. And I'm making sure that I'm planting plants that provide that. 
you know, that, that shelter for them. Also speaking of migrating birds, there's, um, uh, they have this thing called a night sky ordinance. So normally if I'm working in a, uh, I don't, do you have that here in this canyon by chance? Um, I guess I don't care what you do, huh? <laughs> Cause we just installed some lights over here on Scott's uh, fence out here. But the, um, uh, in, in Malibu, because of migrating birds, they actually have this restriction, an ordinance called night sky, where no lights can point up. So any lights that we do in the property with are like, you know, path lights, even lights in trees and whatnot, everything has to point down. And that's so the, uh, at night, the, the migrating birds don't get confused. Or, you know, I, again, I'm not a biologist. I don't know about this stuff. I'm just following instructions. And as a designer, those are the kind of limitations and things I have to work with. But it, again, it challenges me to be a better designer and, um, and to be stronger. And like now I'm ready to take on the next big project. It's one question. Okay, hey, we got a question. How about that? What's the question, Scott? It's from Tammy. Oh, it's from Tammy. Hi, Tammy. So you said you're on a new iteration. Can you go into how we tap into these new creative phases, how one creation leads to another? Can you repeat that? You said you're on a new iteration of yourself. Yeah, right, right. Can you go into how we tap into these new creative phases and how one creation leads to another? Uh, phase leads gosh, to another? That's a good question. Okay, so she asked um, that I, she said, I, I, I mentioned I'm in a new uh, iteration, a new, new phase that I'm stepping into. And she asked, what, what is the process of how you, like a transition, basically? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it, it can be confusing. Um, it's and it's extremely challenging. It's it's it, it 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 is in our nature to grow. We nature is driven by a law called more life, and everything that you see from the the leaf falling off of a tree to a lemon uh, being birthed on a on a fruit a lemon tree is an expression of more life. And if we don't listen to that in ourselves, because we are part of nature, we have this law of more life living through us. If we don't listen to that, it will cause, I won't go into what I believe, how it causes physical issues, but it, it'll, it will suffer. It'll, it'll make us very unhappy. Just, just think about anybody or yourself, if you had a job that you didn't like, um, you, you, know, you suffer. The point is, and, what I, and I'm going to try to answer this question, is you just have to surrender and say, yeah, okay, I realize there's something else that is trying to come through. And um, you, you just have to you follow it and listen. And meditation works a lot for me. Um, and I, and I, just, I just go out in nature. Nature is my meditation. I'm very fortunate. I get to spend a lot of time outside. And it is truly my... Um, my meditation to be out there. I listen and I, and I, and I, and I know that there's something next. I was inspired to create this online course to teach what I do and to write these books. I, it wasn't something I thought about. It was something that was inside that needed to come out. And, um, you know, the, the, just like when I sought out nature as a teacher, and by the way, I did go back to school for landscape architecture. So there's the tangible ones. I sought out help with, from people who knew more about the things I don't know, like uh, like my like my editor Tammy, who is asking the question, <laughs> she's helping me write the book. Uh, Scott, who is not only my technical guru, he is also an online educational specialist, and we met at a conference that I spoke at a few years ago, and he said, "Hey, I'd love to learn landscape design." I said, "Okay, that's cool. What what do you do?" He goes, "Oh, I'm an uh, online educational uh, engineer or designer," and I was like. Are you effing kidding me? I need that. I need that right now. See, that's that's nature. That's the universe saying that's the right path. That's you, you're you're paying attention. Talk to this guy. Scott and I have been good friends now for three years, and we are finally getting that course developed and ready. And and, and now we have a great friendship because of the same with Tammy. Tammy helped me organize my thoughts and how I wanted to uh, to write this book. And, uh, and, and now we're friends and I call her all the time just to, you know, vent sometimes, <laughs> but anyway, Tammy, I hope that answered your question, but I think you knew the answer to that question already. You were just setting me up. So, um, 
Okay, so is there any other questions? That's it. That's it. All right. Well, whew. <laughs> thank you for being here. Um, and uh, I, I hope you got something out of this. I, I really just wanted to share my experience. And oh, uh, I guess some housekeeping stuff. Scott, you did you put in the uh, in the chat info at Michael Bernier? design.com i did not okay just think wrap it up oh wrap it up right well i've still got technically i have 10 minutes so no okay all right we're wrapping this up uh so those of you who know me reach out to me if you what i'm going to do is i'm going to offer a um a free chapter of the book and a discount for pre-order so if scott can get that thing up look for it it's info at michael bernier design.com send me an email or reach out to me on social media and, uh, and I'll we'll make sure that we do that. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks for listening. Thank you for letting me share and go get them. Um.